Okay, so our lesson for today is going to be talking about writing topic sentences. So you're going to be needing this foldable, not foldable, but foldable in your packet, as well as this one that has a bunch of hamburgers on it. So we're going to label our next available page in our composition notebook, topic, sentences. And then we'll flip to our table of contents. And pull that out. Okay, so this foldable, we are going to cut all the way around the outside and glue the whole thing down onto this page that we just created. Okay, then because it's sideways, I'm going to flip it to one side. Doesn't matter what side you glue it or what um, way you face it on the page. You just glue the whole back side down and then glue it onto your page. I'm going to put it in like this. So you can have it facing the other way as well if you want. Okay, so topic sentences. How to write a topic sentence. First of all, topic sentences are like an introduction to your paragraph. So I'm going to write up here, introduction to paragraph. Okay, and it tells you here is what I am going to say, basically. So the first sentence of the paragraph is giving you like a little glimpse of what the paragraph is going to be about or what, or just like a little summary of what the paragraph or the main idea of it is. So you wanna make sure you name your topic in your topic sentence and then answer this question. What do you wanna say about your topic? In other words, how do you feel about it? What do you want people to know about it? What do you wanna prove about it? and then write your answer as an interesting sentence. So these topic sentences, a lot of the times, they grab or hook the reader's attention. So that's why they say make it interesting. They grab or hook the reader's attention right away so that they're interested to read more about it in the rest of your paragraph, okay? so. Topic sentences introduce what's going to be talked about in the paragraph or otherwise saying, here's what I'm going to talk about. And the next page in your composition notebook is where we're going to put this next foldable. So we're going to do topic, sentence, practice as our title. And then watch your table of contents. Ooh, actually, I gotta flip over to my next page. I'm on page two of my table of contents. So, topic, sentence, practice. Okay. Sorry, I didn't need to hear the, the announcement. Um, um, so you're gonna take this next page, and I shrunk the page so that we could cut it out and glue the whole thing into our composition notebook. So go ahead and cut it all the way around the outside, just like we've been doing for the last couple pages. And this was actually a worksheet that I shrunk down so we can have some examples in there. And I'm actually gonna trim this way just a little bit. You don't have to, but. And actually, if you wanna get rid of the name slot too, you can do that. We don't need the name. So it's going in your book and only your book. Okay, and then glue the whole thing down. Okay, so top slice topic. So again, we talked about comparing a paragraph to a hamburger, and that's what is being done in these here. 
So the topic sentence introduces your paragraph. And what you can kind of compare it to with the top bun is normally think about you at a restaurant. If you order a burger or a sandwich and it comes to you at your table, most of the time what you see first of the whole sandwich itself is that top bun. You sometimes can see it over the tray or over the container it's in as a waitress or waiters bring it to you. But when you get it set in front of you and before you start eating it, the top bun is what you see. And sometimes that top bun can look really, really good. It could be crisp, it could be soft, it could have little sesame seeds on top. So all of that that you see on the, the top bun of a hamburger is kind of what you're going to um, kind of get a first glimpse or a first judgment of how the sandwich is going to be. Same thing with a paragraph here. Your topic sentence is kind of the first glimpse or the first judgment of what the rest of your paragraph is going to be. And a lot of times restaurants will make their top buns of their hamburgers interesting by adding, you know, um, the sesame seeds or the crispiness or they make it golden brown with butter on top. And that's to kind of hook you into going, wow, this is going to be a great sandwich. Same thing with this. So the topic sentence helps hook the reader. We want to make it interesting. We want to make it look good. Um, but also still say, here's what I'm about to say in the paragraph. Okay, so it says, top off a tasty paragraph with the topic sentence. A topic sentence states the main idea of a paragraph. Read each paragraph below. Then on the top slice of bread, write a topic sentence that names the subject and gives the main point of the paragraph. Okay, so I'm going to do the first one with you, and then in class, in your next in-person day, or if you're in person on today's lesson, I'm going to be checking these three as an assignment. But I'm going to do the first one with you. So we're going to read this part here, and then we're going to kind of think about what the heck the paragraph is talking about, what's the main idea of it, and then how can we kind of summarize it, but say, here's what I'm about to say about this in your topic sentence. Meanwhile, still making it interesting. A lot of stuff going on. So let's read it. Sandwiches can be oozing with peanut butter and jelly. They can also be stacked high with bologna and cheese. Some sandwiches are served hot with melted cheese and steak. Sandwiches can come in a pita pocket without crust or on whole wheat bread. Sandwiches make tasty meals. Now, kind of ironic that this first paragraph is talking about a sandwich and we're using a sandwich uh, model here. But I see a lot of different kinds of sandwiches mentioned here. So my topic sentence or sentence can't be about one specific type of sandwich. I have to make sure that I'm talking about many sandwiches as a whole because they talk about peanut butter and jelly, they talk about bologna and cheese, um, Swiss steak or melted cheese and steak, pita pocket, whole cr or without crust or whole wheat bread. So a lot of different types of sandwiches being talked about here. So somehow my topic sentence has to say something about multiple kinds of sandwiches. Now I will tell you, think about this, your top bun and your bottom bun of a sandwich or a hamburger are basically the same. They're still bread. They come as a whole and the cook um, or the grocery store cuts them in half. So they start as one and they're broken apart to kind of hold everything inside together. So your topic sentence and your conclusion sentence should almost identically be the same sentence. However, your topic sentence is gonna say this is what it's going to be about, and your conclusion sentence is gonna say this is what it was about. So um, predicting the future and then restating the past is kind of how you can think of it. But what I always tell kids is write your topic sentence first, and then just reword it to be your conclusion sentence. So these two should go hand in hand. We can kind of look at this here. Sandwiches make tasty meals. That is this paragraph's conclusion sentence. So is there a way that we can reword sandwiches make tasty meals? Not have it be the same exact sentence, but to say, I'm going to be talking about sandwiches making tasty meals. Now we don't want to say, I will be talking about in this paragraph, because that is not fun for a reader to read. I know if I was reading a paragraph that started that way, I'd go, oh, all right, let's get through this. And we don't want that. We want to hook the readers right away. We want to make it interesting. So let's think of a way that we can reword sandwiches make tasty meals to say, this is what it's going to be about. It has to have multiple sandwiches mentioned in there. Um, it also has to have something about tasty meals or being great options or something along that line. So topic sentence, what we could say 
is there are many ways to make a sandwich because now it's talking about different ways to have the insides of the sandwiches be different. Um, let's just try this one. There are many ways to, hmm, do I want to say make a sandwich? Because it's not really talking about making a sandwich. There are many ways to hmm, create a sandwich or many, there are many ways to stuff the inside of a sandwich. How should I word this? Now I probably should have written it in pencil. So I could have erased it if I needed to, but there are many ways to fill a sandwich. Sandwiches can be oozing with peanut butter and jelly. They can also be stacked high with bologna and cheese. Some sandwiches are served with hot melted cheese and steak. If I were to say there are many ways to fill a sandwich or to fill the inside of a sandwich, and then say sandwiches can be oozing with peanut butter and jelly, that's kind of talking about the inside of it, okay? This part is also talking about the inside. This is also talking about the inside. Now this is talking about the outside, but it's still talking about different ways to have a sandwich. And then sandwiches make tasty meals. There are many ways to make, let's do this. I'm gonna use this word to tie from my conclusion sentence to this up here. There are many ways to make a sandwich tasty. There are many ways to make a sandwich tasty. Sandwiches can be oozing with peanut butter and jelly. They can also be stacked high with bologna and cheese. Some sandwiches are served hot with melted cheese and steak. Sandwiches can come in a pita pocket without crusts or on whole wheat bread. Sandwiches make tasty meals. Look at this. I use the word tasty, I use the word sandwich, and I use the word make in the sentence up here. But these two are not the same sentences but I like to use a few of the same keywords in each so that they tie it together. Because remember, a real hamburger bun comes as one whole and we cut it in half to be separate. The bottom part holds the bottom and it kind of has a different role than the top, even though their main roles are the same. Same with topic and conclusion sentence. Um, topic sentence and conclusion sentence help summarize either what's about to be said or what was said, but they are still different. Okay, so they have different roles, but the same role at the same time. So that's kind of why I like to use a few of the same keywords in each one, just to help the reader notice, oh, okay, this is ending that paragraph. And this is starting the paragraph. Now your job is to read through these three paragraphs here and create a topic sentence that fits each one of these. There's not really a right or wrong answer, um, but we do want to be careful. Let's flip back to this page here. We do want to be careful and not to start out our paragraph with, I'm going to add a number four down here. And I'm going to say, let's zoom in a little so you can see it. Say, do not start with something along the lines of, this is what I'm going to be talking about or any combination of that. Okay, because that is not interesting. That is not how we start off a paragraph. I would hate to read through a paragraph or a story that said, this is what I'm going to be talking about. This is what this paragraph is going to be about. Here's what I'm going to talk about today. We know you're going to be talking about that today. That's why you're writing it. That's why you're creating this paragraph. We don't want to say that because we already assume that. Okay, so we want to make it interesting, like this says here, an interesting sentence, grab or hook the reader's attention. Okay, so you are going to be finishing the three paragraphs on the second sheet here, and then I will be checking it in class. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.